Welcome to the next episode of Artists in Residences, the Westport Library's virtual artist series. I'm Carol Erger Fass, and I'm the exhibit curator at the library. Today, Migs Burroughs talks with collage artist Joan Miller. Joan is on our art committee at the library, but I met her several years ago when we both on the public art committee uh, where Joan was um, working on the database, which was such detailed and um, really painstaking uh, labor, trying to get the entire town collection um, online. At the time, I didn't know that Joan was an artist, but once I saw her work, it all made sense. Joan's collages are meticulously designed geometrics, and she uses color and pattern to make her shapes move forward and backwards in space. Um, it creates an illusion that's sort of reminiscent of maybe MC, MC Escher or like op art of the 60s. But since the quarantine, Joan's creativity seems to have taken a 180. And um, so let's join Migs and Joan and she can share with us what she's been up to. All right. Well, thank you, Carol, and thanks again to the library for this great series. Um, it's entertaining, and for me, I get to meet, and as long as I've known of Joan's work, I confess I don't know very much about your background, so maybe we might get into a little bit of that, of, you know, where you, did you study art? Is there art in your family? Do you want to briefly give a little, a little bio? Sure. Uh, I have no formal training but I come from a family of art or art-related activities. My father was a graphic designer. Um, my mother was a dancer. She was on Broadway at one point. Uh, I've got a sister who's an architect. I've got another sister who's a graphics editor. And I just do a little bit of everything, you know. I, came to the collages just because I saw something somewhere and I wanted to try it. Uh, and it sort of evolved from there. But as Carol said, I'm doing a completely different project at the moment. Yeah, well, it certainly has, as we can see over your shoulder, just, you know, a little glimpse of these intricate geometrics. And um, when we look at your other things you everyone will appreciate the departure you've taken i'm sure there's over i'm curious more about the overlap and the in the commonality of, of what you're looking at when you look at, at when you take photographs but i mean briefly about your geometry uh, i don't know what you call what do you call them i mean they're collaged because they, people if they don't appreciate it these are all it's all cut paper correct mm -hmm. yeah i just call it cut paper usually um and my background, my, I have two degrees in biology. And so I've come back around to my origins with what I'm doing now. But the collages come in because I'm interested in symmetry and color and also impossible objects where you can take an image and change it up so that it looks real, it looks possible, and in reality, there's no way you could build it. <laughs> yeah, so as Carol said, very Escher-like um, in that, yeah, playing with dimensions and, and space and uh, it fools your eye and, and definitely, you know, entertains the eye and, 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 and challenge, yeah. challenges you too. Yeah, my goal is is to get movement out of something that's absolutely flat, you know, to trick your eye to make things move in and out and, mm. you know, to do it in a way that I'm playing with symmetry and color and just fooling your eye. Yeah, you know, I mean, you said you studied biology, but you were a biology major? Yeah. Because I mean, if you you know now that we're looking you know getting close up looks at viruses and weird things, DNA. I mean, there's a geometry 
to nature, obviously, too, right? Their patterns yeah, and that, that, that's part of what I'm looking at with the photographs that I'm doing, is there are patterns, you know, there's symmetry, there's color, there's all the things that I'm doing. But I found that given the stress of our current time, that I just can't sit and, and do the painstaking kinds of things that I was doing. And I'll come back to them at some point. But right now, I'd rather do something that is more freeform and you don't know what you're going to see. You know, there are lots of surprises and it gives me a lot of happiness in my day to go out and see what I see and just go from there. Yeah, and I, I think maybe because we all find we have a lot of time on our hands that it sounds, you know, there's, there's a quote actually by a naturalist named John Burroughs, there's no, no uh, relation at all, but uh, it makes it easier to, to quote him, but um, it, it's the, uh, the lesson that life constantly repeats is to look under your feet. The, the great opportunity is where we are. Um, and that's maybe an example of what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're looking around you, right? And capturing things that you're yeah. pausing to, to appreciate what's right around you. Yeah, I haven't actually said what I'm doing. Uh, last summer, I got a new camera. Just a, a little... Uh, is it a, what is it? A Fuji or what? It's a Lumix. Lumix, okay. Which is Panasonic. But the thing that's great about it is the zoom. It has a 30x zoom, which means you can see a lot with it. You know, maybe not the same as a big professional camera, but something that's easy to just take with me. And every day I take a walk and I see what I see. And what's really surprising, I live near downtown Westport. I live near the river. And everything that you're going to see when I show you my slideshow was taken within a half mile of downtown. It's amazing to me how much is there if you just stop and you look and you appreciate the day. And even if it's cold and it's yeah. you know, drizzly, there's always something to see. Did you want to try that? Do you want to try, see if we can look at your slideshow? Um, I thought I'd start by showing you some of the geometric work that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And this piece is one of the more recent ones. And the way it works is that I do a drawing and then I transfer it to what I, I'm going to use as the framework color. In this piece, you see the dark lines that are around everything. And I've cut those all out. So it's, it's sort of like the, if you had a stained glass piece, you'd have a framework for mm. it. And then I'm taking the colored page, papers uh, that are behind the framework and it's all glued together, but you're seeing it as dimensional and in reality, it's all completely flat except for the thickness of the paper. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, right. show you a few more. Yeah, I try to, we, we, well, we have, we have 20 minutes left, so okay. we have. All right, so I'm not going to talk about these, but I just wanted to show you. Yeah. How, how dimensional. Sometimes they're inspired by something. You can see this is about musical instruments, but I don't start out constantly thinking of theory, of ideas. I'm just showing what I'm showing. And mm -hmm. sometimes it comes out in a direction, and sometimes it's just what I've done. They're so complex, yeah. Well, this one is completely symmetrical, except for that pink square. Hmm. And by putting it off center, it really changes 
the directionality of the piece. And again, completely flat. Mm. But this is what I'm doing lately. You know, I'm just exploring my neighborhood and taking photos and it's really amazing. Wow, so your lens, how far away are you in reality from this creature? Uh, well, this is a 30X zoom. And I was standing, there's a little inlet behind the levet, and I was standing across the water from him. Wow. One of the things I love is that you can see the feathers and the patterns. Yeah. And I love, even though I know it's anthropomorphic, I love that he has personality. Yeah. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's just a lucky accident. Mm. I can see him heading towards the sunlight and I waited. Uh, yeah, there's a pool of light. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I think this guy is a juvenile heron, <laughs> but I'm not actually sure. You know, I haven't become a birder particularly, and I'm certainly not an ornithologist, but it's been really fun. And sometimes you just get surprises. Uh, I love reflections. I'm always looking at the reflections. Yeah. Uh, this guy I saw behind the police station, beautiful, beautiful egret. Yeah, just this was a nice out. surprise. I mean, <sighs> Who knows that there's color? Yeah, right. We never see them. We're never close enough or they're moving too fast to appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, so partly this is about the birds and partly it's about, you know, trying to just make beautiful photographs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can find these are tiny uh, and they're just sandpipers that are running along the mud flat. Uh, this is the beauty of my camera. Sometimes you can get in close. Oh yeah, and see things like Jeez. the bees. Or I mean, I mean, could you replicate, or have you uh, probably obviously thought of trying to replicate this with paper? I mean, there, there, there. It's geometry, right? I mean, it's yeah, I, I'm thinking about it, but yeah. I haven't arrived there yet. I feel like there's a next step to this, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is yet. That was last winter, but I, I really like how the ice formed around the rose hips. <laughs> and this is just a little wren, or I think he's a wren. He might be a sparrow, I'm not sure. But he's just sitting on a branch on a really cold day, all fluffed up for the weather. Uh -huh. And there's crows everywhere. And you just see, oh, another black bird, but he's really beautiful, you know. And again, I see personality, even though I know it isn't really there. Taking a break from a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, who looks at pigeons? I know. Look at that. Look, look at that pattern. And you wonder with nature, you know, how they evolve that way. Why do they need a green neck that turns into a purple neck that turns into a gray? I mean, interesting question. What is that? Is it can't be camouflage? And yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah, look at this duck. I mean, it's 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 like a watercolor. You know, the feathers are just so beautifully flowing together. And this is just <laughs> the female duck all tucked together. Who knew mm. that they could bend themselves in that way? And I love the ripples. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look at the little pieces of the grass on his beak. Yeah, yeah, he's just out there having lunch, and uh, this is a cormorant. And mm -hmm. when they when they swim, all you really see is their head and neck. But yeah. again, look at the patterning. Look at the symmetry. Although he's lost a few feathers. It's only because uh, of the the gray metallic look. It's almost like armor. I mean, it looks like kind of armor plating in a way. Yeah, really. Even though they're soft feathers, but. Mm -hmm. And there he is close up. 
and it looks almost more like fur than feathers on his mm. head. You know, he's got all of the bigger feathers, but he's and his, really his stunning. Eyes, yeah. And that's a kingfisher. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know we had kingfishers until one day I heard the sound and I was just trying to track where it came from. And this is what it turned out to be. And another surprise, these, I'm not sure, I think they're either mergensers or they're buffleheads. I mean, Neither birds. Which I've ever heard of, but I. Yeah, they're kind of dark. Okay. And they were out a lot in January and February. And it was just the striping is beautiful and the and the fat you know the ripples in the water i mean are kind of almost echoing a little striping on the back i mean they're just more patterns you know in nature i mean they're right. just, just a big field of mm -hmm. pattern uh again a surprise i know this isn't the most fabulous picture but this is a bittern what's it called and a bittern that's and, the goofiest bird I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he has these big shoulders and neck. And I was taking pictures of what I thought was a heron. And it mm -hmm. turned out to be this guy. This is what I said earlier about I love the surprises. Yeah. You know, it's just such a joy to go out every day and see what you see. You just don't know what you're going to get. And some of the pictures, this is my driveway. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the other morning. Wow, it was very, really foggy, and those like are a, the chip. like a Japanese watercolor almost. Very... Yeah, and that was that was just taken right along the river, river, where all of those, I think they're pear trees are blooming. They might be a cherry, but I think they're pear. But I love this series, I have a, several of them, just because it, it does look so watercolory. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are gray piacinth, and the patterns on those are gray. Quince, <laughs> and just a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the slideshow. Wow, that's phenomenal. That's really a it's, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say, like, I, you know, didn't see most of those birds and flowers. And it's like, it's like you said, it's right there for, to be, to be watched and observed and, and, and enjoyed. We just look, but thank yeah. you. That, that's well, really I, extraordinary. Can't wait to see where you, I mean, I, they, they, they stand alone as photography, but, you know, to be combined with your paper cutouts, you might be, be able to do some. Yeah, I, I have ideas. I just haven't arrived there yet you know i think it's possible to combine them but one of the things i worry about is that i want my work to be archival and the paper i use and the glue and all of that i've worked very hard mm. to figure out how to make it so that three years or ten years or whatever it's not in pieces on the bottom of the frame yeah, good thought. So, <laughs> but there's got to be a way to do a transfer or something. I just don't know yet what it's going to be. Yeah. You, you know, make, scan them and have prints made also that could be sold for more reasonable price. They don't have to give away the original or whatever. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nowadays, there's so many ways to yeah. know, distribute art. Yeah, there's lots to think about. You know, it's not as if I don't have time. <laughs> you know, being home yeah, home right. Time. Well, that's we all have plenty of. Well, thank you for your time, Joan, and these and wonderful uh, introduction to your to your new direction, and they're just gorgeous. And uh, I'll send it back to Carol to say goodbye. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Thanks, Joan. That was really cool to see the uh, difference, but also the similarities in your two completely different um, creative endeavors. I mean, the patterns that come up and um, it'll be interesting to see over time how you meld those um, going forward, because I think I think it's almost like you you can see where it's starting to collide. It's pretty cool. Um, Anyway, so for um, more information about anything uh, online at the library or for the current um, information about the physical library, visit uh, the Westport, uh, visit um, westportlibrary.org and um, hope to see you there soon. Bye. Thank you for having me. <laughs>